I am flabbergasted by the lack of practitionership in the actual creative ability and paid media amplification of creative to make a business action. I, for a lot of you that don't know, built my family's liquor business really on the back of Google AdWords. Google AdWords came out, I bought the word wine for five cents a clip, and even though I was doing direct mail and doing local television and billboards, I get a lot of accolades in this ecosystem from building my dad's liquor store from a three to a $60 million business, but the truth is I stand here tonight and admit to you, not excitingly, that it should have been $150 million. Because if I actually understood how unbelievable the arbitrage was on Google AdWords, I would have spent a lot more money on it and grew my business much more. But I was too patient, I did well, not enough, I did not go all in, and I built a nice business, but in reality, I left a lot on the floor. Tonight, as we sit here tonight, as we sit here tonight, the number one arbitrage in marketing in the world, and I don't give a shit if you do B2B. How many people in B2B? Raise your hands. Uh-huh. I know you fuckers. How many people in B2C? Uh-huh. So even better. I'll, I'll, I'm glad, this is why I do this. It allows me to go in a certain direction. B2B clients for me at Vayner and the startups that I'm involved with are doing even better than B2C clients on social, specifically Facebook, because there's one amazing thing about B2B. We, and I'm in it now with VaynerMedia, we know the name of the customer. We know the businesses we want. We even know the decision maker we want. The problem is, we suck. We get real lazy and we send bulk fucking emails on linked fucking in. Can we make a pledge tonight? Actually, you know what, let's do this. If you're willing to pledge to no more bulk email, horseshit, spec email on LinkedIn, stand up so I can clap for you personally. Make a pledge. Let's, let's wait, get up. More, fuck this bulk email shit. Don't sit back down, dude, with the beard. Get the fuck back up, I see you, I'm talking to you, yeah, you. There we go. Let's, no, 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 no. Let's clap it up for this pledge, no more. Enough! Thank you. Guys, best part is the shit doesn't work. How many people here have done email marketing in their career? Raise your hands. Are you looking for your seat? Hey, you looking for your seat? <laughs> Got it, okay. How many people here have done, bulk e have done email marketing in their careers? I'm just curious. In 1997, I had a 200,000 person email newsletter for Wine Library and winelibrary.com that had 91.3% open rates. Not because I was a hero, but because email marketing hadn't existed yet. The thing that I'm most fascinated by is that I know as a marketer, and I'm a marketer, as a marketer, the number one thing, the thing that I know more than the sun will come up tomorrow is that marketers ruin Everything. It's what we do. When I saw that little fucking ghost, I'm gonna fuck up that ghost. I got you, Snapchat. I'm gonna ruin the shit out of this platform. You show me attention, and I'll show you a place that I wanna sell. And that's how it gets changed. And bulk email in 2016 is insanity. Nobody's opening that shit, and what? Just because you have an algorithm that says, hey Gary, and by the way, I saw 10 of these emails today. All the fuckers in this room that have the hey Gary thing that's in a different font than the rest of the email, you suck. <laughs> right? I mean, enough of that. Jesus. <laughs> Fuck. B2B. I'm gonna go tactical because I wanna leave with, I wanna, you know, lately I've been trying to get even more tactical in my keynotes because I love the emails that I get where, hey, thank you so much, it helped my business. Here's the tactic, I'm gonna give you the best blueprint I have for B2B selling right now and I really hope it brings you some value and I'll go into, I'm gonna go into a detail, I'm gonna get a little nerdy. If you're in a B2B environment, you have to run Facebook ads and you have to do it now. They cost about five to six dollars CPM right now on average. The cost of these CPMs will be $30 36 months from now. I'm saying this because I know I'm gonna have the video of this and in three years you're gonna see me share this clip and, be, and I'm gonna tag it, I told you so, motherfuckers. 
It's gonna be $30 a CPM because everybody's gonna figure out how much attention is really on that platform. So the supply and demand curve is gonna change just like wine now is a six, seven dollar word. Got it? Okay, so now you're gonna run Facebook ads and first and foremost, you're not gonna outsource it to somebody else. You're not gonna find little Susie that's 23 in the office and be like, you, you're young, you know social media. You're not gonna do that. You're gonna actually spend 10 hours and read and watch videos. It's crazy, you can learn anything. So many people are like, Gary, but I don't know how to use the Instagram product. I'm like, I get it. You go to Google and you search it, fuck face, okay? <laughs> That's what you do. It's not super complicated. It's crazy. Anything you don't know, you can search in two seconds. Everybody's crippled, like they don't know. It's fucking there. You do that. And so here, you become a practitioner, you actually deploy the Facebook ads yourself so you have some ability and knowledge so somebody can't hose you. You need to be the person that knows it the best. You then target. There's a way to target employees of. One more time, B2B, raise your hands. You guys know who you're going after. I want you to target the employees of that company. One by one, the employees. Now, you take a step back. Now you know you're targeting 15, 17, 22 different businesses. If you wanna get really crazy, you target them one by one and you make videos or pictures just for that company. But if you want scale, you can put them all in a bucket. And now you're gonna make a video or a picture, you know, a billboard or print ad or a television commercial. And you're gonna make it, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna make the creative start with, does your CFO know? Does your CTO know? Does your CIO know? You know exactly who in that organization, in that organization is the person that needs to see that content. And you're gonna start the video or your picture with that statement, and I promise you, for hundreds of dollars, depending on the size of your business, sometimes for thousands of dollars, that person is gonna get 12 to 25 to 100 people forwarding them that piece of content, and that piece of content will be the gateway drug to your sales team to convert and close. It works every time. That's it, right? I can talk about, you like that, right? It's practical, black and white, you got it? Right, I can talk about one life and all that shit, but that's fucking up in the clouds, right? That's like, who gives a fuck, right? Yeah, I care. Okay, that's one, good. Next, two, the single best arbitrage in marketing. And, and I wanna take a step back. I wanna make sure everybody understands. I, I think the slide was up there, we'll end with the slide. I day trade attention. I am not a technologist, I'm not a digital this, I'm not a fucking blogger, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I'm somebody who's obsessed with attention. From when I was six years old, and instead of standing behind the lemonade stands, I would sit and watch cars drive by and figure out where to put the signs. I was sick, you know, to now. So I stand here and actually say, if you have the money, in, I would say HubSpot, if I ran the marketing, the number one thing that I would do is run a Super Bowl commercial. I stand here today as a marketer that trades attention and I believe that the number one deal in marketing today is actually a Super Bowl commercial. It's $6 million, but the entire country, whether they watch it on YouTube or during the game, will know exactly what you're up to. Now most people fuck it up because they try to make a funny video for 30 seconds and then we forget, but that is to me the number one play. The number two play in the world is Facebook video because I believe that Facebook video not confined to 30 seconds, has the ability to build enormous awareness. VaynerMedia had a very special thing happen last week. I don't know if any of you guys caught this, but when the Cubs won the World Series, we ran. Who's from Chicago? <laughs> Finally, right? Fuck, 108. <laughs> when the Cubs won the World Series, we ran an ad, an ad after the World Series. First it was Nike, then it was us, and we brought back Harry Carey from a classic 1984 commercial, and that went big, and everybody said we were geniuses, and I got a lot of emails that night, and it was super awesome, and I replied to everyone saying, wait until tomorrow. What tomorrow was, was the next day, we deployed a two-minute-plus video 
where Harry Carey, we took 30 years of him calling games and chopped it up and had him, over a two minute video, call the final out of the Cubs winning the World Series. That video has 30 million plus views at this point and has drove a lot more incremental growth and awareness and B2B activity for the brand than the commercial did. Though, the commercial media, like buying the commercial and making sure you all saw it, cost multiples, 20, 30 times more expensive than what we deployed in a Facebook environment. This is what's happening. My friends, I want you to become historians of marketing. I want you to also understand what marketing is. We have confusion in the marketplace of marketing and branding versus sales. We have a lot of people in this room that are digital natives and they really understand sales. They understand optimization, UI, UX. They understand cost per click. They understand how you convert and change things and things of that nature. But what they don't do is actually brand and market. And if your business is growing, you have to have a healthy balance of marketing and sales and branding. My friends, I did not buy these sneakers because Nike fucking cookied me and sent me to some fucking website and converted me. I bought it because of brand. And there's a lot of people here that are mixing it up. And the reason Facebook is so special is it's the first platform that I've seen that does marketing and brand and sales in one place with underpriced attention. If you grew up in Google like I did, there was no brand there. We all had blue letters and brand was eliminated. So if I had one plea for the collective room tonight from a marketing and branding and business standpoint, it is that we have to understand the following. And this is tough for the digital landscape, but very easy for the Madison Avenue landscape. Creative is the variable. Creative is the variable of success. The one thing that we all trade on in this room, no matter how and what you do, whether you're B2B or B2C, whether you sell sneakers or wine or books or your services, no matter what, we are all tied to attention. We are all battling for your attention, but once you have my attention, that creative is the variable. If your video sucks shit, I can give you 9,000 ideas on Facebook, you will lose. And that to me is something that has to be debated in this ecosystem much more. The other world I live in, Madison Avenue, where they believe in commercials, they're the other way. They just think it's art. If you understand and start respecting both art and science, math and creative, equally, friction, creating that diamond, you will be a successful marketer over the next decade. The problem is we usually fall into one camp or the other. So if you sit here tonight, please start understanding, respecting, and building your skills around the one that you don't actually do. Because what's happening is we have unbelievably overpriced attention.